This is an installation video of a Delta Fin eBay intercooler on a Mazda Speed Miata. It's a 28 by 7 by 2.5 inch intercooler with 2.5 inch inlet and outlets. I'll explain how to remove the bumper first and it's pretty easy. But here's the bumper. I put it in the back of the car. All there is is one, two, three, four bolts that hold it on the top right there. And then there's like a little tab right here that it's held on by. And there's a screw right here that fits into the corner. And that's pretty much what holds it onto the top then on the bottom there's one two three screws on both sides and then there's one two three nuts on the bottom that hold it on and then you got the electrical connectors to the fog lights and then to the side markers this tab right here, I'll go up here and show you what the tab looks like because it's like a little bit tricky whenever you go to pull it off. But that's what the tab looks like. By looking at it, you'll be able to figure out like what you gotta do to get in there to undo it. I'll try to show it from the bottom side. But that's pretty much what this thing looks like and there's the screw hole for the corner of the bumper but that's pretty much what holds the bumper on there's just you got one two three screws on the bottom and you got some plastic plastic button thingies that hold the wheel well liner on in three places and like the bumper will fit up into these slots but they don't hold on to it they just kind of slide in there but that's pretty much what holds the bumper on I'll get to the intercooler next okay this part is about the installation of the intercooler the main thing about installing this larger 28 by 7 by two and a half intercooler is it's larger and you have to make clearance for it and make sure that, that it fits because it's substantially bigger than the stock intercooler. But the things that you have to look out for is like up here in the front, you have the lines. These are the lines that go to the power steering. And what you gotta do is you gotta move these lines up and then forward because like they'll hit the intercooler so you got to move them up and then forward and make some brackets for them and I'll get to that a little bit later and then the next thing that you got to do is in the back here in the back here you got to make clearance for this air conditioner line right there I'll try to get in at different angles so you can see the clearance of it. But I made sure that I made uh, enough clearance for it so I can stick my finger in there between the intercooler and the line. So it isn't really going to ever hit even whenever there's like vibration going down a bumpy road or whatever. There's plenty enough clearance that's so not going to rub a hole through any of the lines. But that should give you a good idea on the clearance of the line in the rear. The next thing that you got to make sure that you got clearance for is the frame of the car. Like right here where the tie down hooks are, like this is where the frame of the car is. So you just got to make sure that there's room between the intercooler and the frame of the car right there. And you can see I got plenty enough clearance right in here between the frame and the intercooler on this side 
and then I'll go over to the other side here and try to show the clearance over there but you can see there's plenty enough clearance between the frame and the intercooler itself and as far as the power steering line right there you can see how much room that I've got left for it there's there's not that much room for it I had to really move them up and tie them down and make brackets for it so that they won't interfere with the intercooler another thing that I did is I made like some spacers and it dropped at first I put the intercooler up too high but I just put some spacers in where the brackets are on the intercooler and lowered the intercooler down just a little bit you can see that and now there's definitely a lot of space between the intercooler and those power steering lines and I'll show a different angle for the power steering lines you can see there's plenty enough clearance over here one other thing whenever I was moving these power steering lines uh, there's like a little rubber bushing that kind of holds the lines in a bracket right over there the the little rubber bushing kept popping out so what I did is I put a wire around the bracket so that the bushing wouldn't pop out. And I'm telling you, it's a pain in the butt to put that bushing back into that bracket. You'll, you're better off just putting a wire around it first and it won't pop out whenever you're moving the lines around. One other thing that I did, I put this camera onto the ground, I guess, for a second. One other thing that I did is I used this right here. Whenever I was, whenever I was uh, getting everything all set up and checking all the clearances, I just used this and put the intercooler onto it, and I was able to raise it up and down a little bit until I got it just in the right spot and made sure all the clearances were good. And then after I did that, after I did that, I made the brackets. Once I had the intercooler positioned, you know, down to the millimeter, I made all the brackets and everything. I'll stop the video and make another video on the brackets and stuff. As far as the brackets are concerned, these right here are the stock brackets for the intercooler and the power steering lines. Like the power steering lines fit right here. These brackets kind of fit this way up against the frame of the car right here. And what I did is the bolts that went through right here, uh, I just made brackets. You can see these little L-shaped brackets that I made. I just used, I just used the bolts that went through here and made a bracket and then use the bolts and put this bracket using those bolts onto the frame of the car and then the power steering line had their own little brackets on them already that kind of have some rubber that goes around the line so that's how I made those so I'll get these out of the way for now and then this bracket right here it went right here like this and it went in behind the frame of the car right there and it was holding the the horn right here but for the horn I took the bracket on the horn that was already there and then I bent the bracket a little bit and I elongated the hole you can see right there the hole has been elongated so that the whole entire horn kind of falls downward a little bit so that whenever I put the bumper on the bumper comes right here so that horn with a bolt hole elongated the whole entire thing kind of fell down a little bit so it'll definitely clear the bumper now and it won't rub against anything 
So it's not rubbing against the frame. It's not rubbing against the power steering lines or anything. So I just made it fit. I bent this a little bit so that it would clear. But I'll get this out of the way here. And that's pretty much what the brackets for the power steering lines look like. You can see that they're just like a little L-shaped bracket. You might be able to see the bolt in there too from underneath. And the next thing that I did is you can see on the top of the intercooler itself, I chose to make a bracket that went from one side of the intercooler all the way over to the other side. You can see it right there. And then I'll go underneath the car here. And then you can see the bracket right there. I chose to do it that way. I, I think it was just a little bit easier than making like these really crazy L shapes with the thick material that I had. But that's what my bracket looked like from underneath. And like I was talking about before, you can see that little that little spacer that I made out of the bracket material. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. And I just put in those spacers in the power steering lines. I was able to control the height of the intercooler by making those spacers. And I made just enough room for the power steering lines to go over the top of the intercooler by just adding spacers or removing spacers. And the upper, the upper brackets right here, that's what they do. They control the height of the intercooler. So I could raise and lower the intercooler using these. But the only problem with uh, these brackets is the intercooler cannot move up and down whenever they're secured. But the bottom of the intercooler can move forward and backward, kind of like a swing. So what I did is I made this bracket on the bottom to stop the bottom of the intercooler from moving back and forth. So that's why I made that bracket right here. And I'll just show you what it looks like. There's really not much room back here underneath the car. But that's what the bracket looks like that I made underneath. It's just a simple 90 degree. I, I bent all these brackets by hand. It was like really, really difficult because you got to put a lot of force into it. I used a vise and some gloves and I just bent them with my thumbs and hand to get them to fit. But that bracket works really well. There's clearance between the bottom of the bumper and this bracket. So this thing's pretty secured. The the bracket right here that was on the intercooler piping, it holds the intercooler piping from moving. And whenever you clamp these, these uh, clamps down on the hose, it like really holds the intercooler also. So it kind of acts as a brace. So the intercooler is really not going to move anywhere. I could like kind of move the whole car, you know, by grabbing onto this like that so it's really really secure it ain't gonna be like vibrating or moving anywhere and same thing with the power steering lines like they're not gonna move anywhere so they're not even gonna budge so even though the clearances are very small nothing moves anywhere because I got the brackets holding everything like really really good but I think that's about all that needs to be put into this video. I tried to show a bunch of different angles. I might take some pictures and put them at the end of this video also. But that's my video for now. I hope it helps out for somebody installing one of these eBay intercoolers on their Mazda Speed or even just a regular Miata. But 
that's my video for right now. Hope you like it. Hope it helps.